Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your February 2021 full moon reading for you. Now, I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space and raise our own energy vibration. But before we do that, once again, a reminder not to engage with anybody in the comment box pretending to be me offering you a reading. That person is not me. They are scammers. Do not be scammed. All right. Now let us clear this energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Gemini, how will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. Fantastic. Now let's see what your chakra energy is for this time. Gemini. How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. Fantastic. So we're starting here with personal power, which is the sacral chakra. Not the sacral chakra, the... This is the solar plexus chakra. There we go. And we're going to see how this all connects with the tarot in just a moment. Then we have the inner child, which is the heart chakra. And finally, we have dreams, which is the third eye chakra. Now, the left-hand side is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. 
We have the Four of Pentacles, the Two of Cups, the Guide, which is the Hierophant in the Rider Waite Smith deck. So this is Taurus energy coming through. April 20th to May 20th is the time frame. Then you have the Queen of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. You're crowned by the world in your heart, the Page of Pentacles, the Three of Cups, and the Three of Swords. Your heart is carrying a lot, a lot, Gemini. Wow, okay. The Ace of Wands, this is a gift you're absolutely taking in the public arena. You're crowned with it. You have the High Priestess, which makes sense. You're, you have heightened sensitivity during this time. The Ten of Swords, which is... It's a rebirth, but again, th there is a focus here on pain that you have lived with for a really long time. And then you step into strength. You step into this personal power that is, is so important. You're, you're changing the narrative that you've lived by for so long. And it isn't just like, oh, change the story that you tell yourself and everything will be okay because I always find that to be rather flippant. It's like you're looking at everything that you've lived through and instead of, sitting there and and beating yourself up and looking at all the mistakes and all the disappointments and saying, why? Like, why am I here? What has this done? And, and how, can I, how can I change? It's looking at things and realizing that there is purpose within everything that we go through. No matter how angry it makes us, no matter how frustrated we get, there is purpose to every single step we take. And you are releasing so much vampiric energy. Okay, so let's look here at your chakra cards because this moon is heavy. Now, this moon is a Virgo full moon. It's very interesting. We have the Virgo full moon in February, and we also have the Virgo full moon in March. And this is the most discriminating of the moons, which doesn't sound like a nice thing, but it is in a way because you're going to sit there and say, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. This is what I need. This is what I want. This is where I need to be. Now, unfortunately, during this moon, we all think that we're right. So this is where this energy really comes into play. The personal power, the sitting there and saying, yes, okay, I believe that I am right, but I'm stepping into the power of myself. I'm stepping into my truth, my understanding, my dedication, my, my purpose. And that is so much more than what I thought it was going to be. It's stepping into your power and you're going to find that it's a little bit difficult during this time to really find your voice, to sit there and say, this is me. And it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because so much is coming to the surface because this is a time where we find harmony and balance to be, to be something that we deeply crave, but we're seeking it. We're seeking it. We're, we're finding our ways. You know, we might not be, be feeling that well. You know, there's, there's questions going on. And so here with this, with this Virgo full moon, the personal power, the stepping into your power, realizing that there is something great within you. And it doesn't have to follow the suit of everybody else. It doesn't have to be like everybody else. But it gets to be the brilliance that is right for you. It gets to be the, the purpose that makes sense. It's kind of like it's kind of like having a gift in one area, right? So you'll think, oh, everybody can draw. That's totally normal, but they can't. So instead of poo-pooing your gifts, look at them for the gifts that they are. And sometimes our gifts are a bit an abstraction. You know, we might be really kind people, really sensitive people. And the world tells us, oh, that's bad. You know, you're supposed to be kind, but up to a certain point. You know, you look at people that really make it, and there's a bit of ruthlessness to them that if you are a truly sensitive person where you're having and you're having this sensitivity come out during this time here, Gemini, you might actually find those people to be rather repellent. So here, when you embrace your power, know that your power is going to come and manifest itself in different ways than you had originally expected or different ways than the world says, this is power. And it doesn't matter who's saying this is power. It is, it is the continuous narrative that goes on. It's the way that you'll see certain people kind of rise because they have that force to them. And if you are a quieter person, you're going to rise in a very different way, not in a bad way, and still in a powerful way, but not in the same way. So here we have the inner child. The inner child comes forward with the heart. And when we embrace our heart chakra, here you're listening to your gut. You might actually find that your stomach gets very upset with things. You get very overwhelmed. It goes to your gut 
during this time. So your power is also going to be in looking at what your gut needs to be truly healthy, to be truly, you know, moving in the right direction. Then we have the, the heart chakra here. And our heart chakra, because we're dealing with so much from the past, right? And this moon also makes us rather nostalgic. So we'll sit there and we'll think of the past and we'll dream of better times or we'll dream when times will be better. And we can forget to really honor who we once were because it's sitting there and saying, oh, this was either the best it would ever be or, and I can't believe I let it slip or, you know, I can't believe that I was taken advantage of that way. I went through that pain here with the, with the heart chakra. And always with the inner child. And it doesn't matter how good a relationship you have with your inner child. It's holding your arms open to that child that you once were. And saying, I'm here for you. I love you. I care for you. Let me, let me protect you. So it's that child running to you. And it's you being that strength for that child. That love, that honor, that protection. And it's a game changer. Because once that child within you, especially if you went through a lot of upheaval, when you were little. I do this because, you know, I had traumatic deaths within my family. Um, all these different things happened and I never felt worthy. And so when I connect with my inner child, when I first started it, I didn't want to because I thought, oh my gosh, there was such, I, I didn't like that part of my life and I didn't like who I was. And now I sit there and I was like, I was a really good kid. So why is it that I'm, I'm sitting there and being angry at myself? for what others placed upon me. So here, it's that connection, and it's that healing, and it takes time. It really does. But if we put in the time, we can move forward. And we have our dreams here. We have our dreams, our desires, our, our third eye chakra is opening, and it's going to be very prevalent in the, in the waking world, okay? In the public arena, in the way that you interact with people. But your dreams are going to lead you towards something more. It's going to be like, oh wow, I never thought of it that way or I never saw it that way or I didn't think that could be for me. And you start to get guidance from your dreams and your dreams start to really open up to you, start to really open up your world to you. And it brings you here to the full moon in Virgo. And always within the full moon, we are told to surrender to the divine because that's where we embrace our power. Surrender to the divine because that is where bounty comes forward. And so here, when we surrender to the divine, we surrender to this place of the spotlight being put on our last lunar cycle, the spotlight being put on what it is that we truly want, but also this place of harmony, this place of coming together, this place of balance. This moon forces us to change, but we need to know the whys and the how comes about everything because the whole point of this moon, excuse me, is to let us know that we are good enough. And I always, I always say this when I read the, the Virgo full moon card, where it says, you know, you're good enough. Because I always thought that that was rather flippant, and it made me really angry. And so when I look at it now, it makes me feel peaceful, but it also makes me feel sad that I had had such anger, such an visceral reaction to, to the statement, when it really is the truth. We are good enough. At this moment, we are who we were born to be. We are on that journey, on that place of development where it was kind of mapped out for us before. I'm not saying that you can't change anything, but I always think of it as, you know those books when you were little where you could pick your own adventure and, and see how things played out or when you were playing a video game and you could see how things played out if you made different choices. And I think we map it out just a bit. And so when we come down to this earthly plane, it's like, if you make these different choices, this part of your world starts to open up or this part of your world. And I don't think any of it is a terrible surprise, okay, to divinity as we're moving forward. But it is a surprise to us because we might sit there and think, oh, but I thought door A was going to open and door C opened up because of the choices we made. Because of this, we, we don't think that we're enough. We don't think that we, we have what it takes because things are changing. And we don't realize that there are infinite possibilities, infinite powers forward because of our free will, because of our connection, because of our understanding. These doors open so much more differently than maybe we had, had thought they would. But if we follow our authentic selves and we really start to sit there and say, but this is me, 
this is my purpose. This is what I desire. This is what I want. We can see doors open towards the harmony and the balance that we keep questioning during this time. Because during this moon, all right, it's a very helpful moon, but it's also a moon that sits there and says, no, I'm not doing this, or no, that's not right for me. And it can be a ra rather affronting when we, we walk into it. Because it's like, well, why isn't that right? And could you <laughs> extrapolate? Like, why are you saying no? Like, why is your inner self saying no? Can you give me more? And you're not really going to find that it's giving you more. But what it's finding here is that we're seeking out the whys and the what fors. You know, why am I doing this? Who am I doing this? What is this for in the long run? And that starts to bring us balance. This is a highly optimistic time, even though we have so much kind of flying at us. We're very inclined during this time to see what we want to see and, and not to keep an open mind, okay? Because it is a discriminating moon. We've already come to conclusions. We already know the answers. It's kind of like that kid that says, I don't need to study. I know everything. And then sits down, takes the test and finds out that it's harder than it is. That's what this time is. And it's kind of like, okay, preconceived notions, preconceived ideas, we're getting that shaken. And as we do so, the people who are going to be the signs that are really affected during this time are going to be Virgo and Pisces. And so if you have these signs in your chart, that part of your personality is going to come up more. It is going to come up more. And we also have to be aware because if we have the earth signs within our chart, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, this is favored with regeneration of understanding, of power moving forward, and is more efficient. Okay, Those sides of us become more efficient during this moon. And what we have to, to realize is that those part of our personalities are going to play the center role. So for Gemini, if you're sitting here saying, oh, but I'm used to discovering, I'm used to, you know, asking a million different questions, this is going to be a time where, yes, you still have that discovery nature to you, but you're going to have a more kind of grounded way of looking at things, more of a, of a, it's not fixed, but I do see it more like a tree. And you're going to want to also be that bird, but you need that tree for the stabilizing effects that it has during this time. And it moves us here to the new moon in Pisces. And the new moon in Pisces, the full moon, is on the 27th of February. The new moon is on the 13th of March. And the new moon moves us towards something, something new. But if we're not careful, once again, we're going to get caught up in the way that we want it to be not in the way that it actually is. So we move here towards a new start is coming and walking through two beginnings. And it brings us to this place of meditation and contemplation. That's why meditation and contemplation is going to be so important because we already have the energy from the Virgo full moon that says, I already know what's going on. You know, I have this all figured out. And then we move into the, the Pisces new moon and the new moon itself. It's like, we already know what we believe. You know, we're already entering into the silence with preconceived notions. And this is a time where you're rocked to your core because the preconceived notions that you had aren't actually going to be working the way that you thought they would. So this is a time to meditate, to contemplate, to, to be in the present, to look at things differently. This is also going to be a time where you're immensely curious. You want to learn more. You want to see more. There's an optimism to you that that needs to be a dress that needs to come forward. And so with the Pisces, yeah, new moon, we need to sit in quiet. And one of the best ways that I found recently, I've just rather recently started doing this, is to start focusing on the breath through the nose. And I find it rather life-changing. And I have a, um, a little, I don't know if it's a documentary or some, a YouTuber talking about this and giving all the, the facts behind it. But just start breathing through your nose. And if you place your hands down on the table or on your lap or whatever, and you just sit quietly and breathe through your nose, it, for some reason, silences the thoughts in a way that I find surprising. And so just breathe through your nose, let that energy be a part of you, and let those breaths soothe you. And you can do this all the time. I mean, if you breathe through your nose all the time, it has such beautiful health benefits. So if we breathe through our nose during the meditation, during the contemplation, it opens up a way of understanding that is, is really good for us. 
And then it moves us to the spirit animal in February, which is the outer spirit. And I know we only have a few days, well, like, you know, one or two days, you know, in, in February to be embraced by this with this moon. And the outer spirit here says, you are never alone. You're never alone because you have the two otters intertwined. You have the love of your spirit guides, the love of your angels with you, the love of divinity. And this says, stop swimming against the current and embrace what truly matters in your life. So often, we're always on to the next fight. We're always on to the next battle. But what if we just stopped and said, what brings me joy? What brings me unity? And we become aware of our subconscious. We become aware of what our bodies truly crave. And that starts to open up our world. And that's what February has been guiding us towards. It's like, what do we really want? And we can see there, there might've been times in February, I know I've definitely had this, where you might not feel as well, it's, it's gray, it's cold, if, if you're living somewhere cold, you know, and it knocks, you, it knocks you for a loop and you feel like the stride that you had before is faltering. But also there's a bit of frustration because of everything that's going on in the world. And you're like, okay, when do I get my normal back? When do I get my power back? To know that you are never alone. To say, okay, let's, let's see what happens. Let's look at things and go with the flow of our bodies, of our hearts, of our souls, of ourselves. It can be very freeing. And then it moves us to the spirit animals of March, which are the wolf spirit and the whale spirit. And these are beautiful spirit animals. The whale spirit says, trust in the great mysteries. And the wolf spirit says, turn knowledge into wisdom. So when we have the, the whale spirit, the whale spirit is the record keeper of the world. So we have this beautiful spirit animal around us, this beautiful energy around us, or even just to kind of meditate on in our minds, what does the record keeper of the, the world, of the earth, mean to us? What does that look like? What knowledge comes forward? And this is us starting to listen to our inner voice because the question has been posed. And then we start to connect with the power of our emotions, the power of our vi vibrations, the power of our voice. And then this leads us to the, to the wolf spirit who is turning knowledge into wisdom. And that's what we accumulate over time. We accumulate knowledge that becomes the wisdom that we live by. We have this sharpened in intellect coming up. We have this deep connection to others coming forward, but also to ourselves. And the sense for freedom, this longing for freedom, and this strong instinct to to follow our path, but also to follow what we need. And it might not always seem that what we need is so in line with what we should want, but what we need really does come calling forward. And it's also kind of working out our place within the pack of our lives. So in, yeah, so here it's like we want our independence, we want our, our freedom, but we also want that connection to others and to claim our own sacred space within that connection. So that's really... That's really rather beautiful. And it brings us to really looking at the vampiric energy that is around us. The four of pentacles. I always see this as having to hold on to the wealth that you have because there's a sense, there's a fear that the wealth will not come, that the prosperity will not come, that there'll be doubts and fears and angers and upsets and upheavals and we'll always have somebody taking it away from us. And this is within the inner self. This is where you're doing so much healing because you're looking at the fears and the angers that you have. You look, you're looking at the way things are taken away. And you're sitting there and saying, no more. No more am I going to be living in, in this place of poverty. It is, it is a place of poverty because it's like as soon as you get it, the other energies around you take it away. They take away your power. They take away your brilliance. They take away your prosperity. And you just feel drained. You feel overwhelmed. You feel like no matter how hard you fight, it just, it just will never be, be right. It just will never be enough. And that's what you're combating during this time. That's why you're having the healing love of the two of cups come in and say, it's time for unity. It's time for understanding. It's time for bringing things together because this is like leeches. The four of pentacles for me is, is like leeches. It's leeches sucking out all our energy, all of what we desire. And it's kind of like, well, why do I feel tired? Because you have these emotional vampires, you have these leeches attached to you. And it can be, you know, people in general that you, that you know, but it can be the state of the world. It can be everything that's going on, the worry, the fear, the doubt that comes up. And it's leeching away your vital happiness, your vital prosperity. It can be, oh, 
you know, you can't make a living this way, or, oh, you always fail, so why don't we just wait till the shoe drops, until everything falls apart, because it always does. That leeches away your happiness. This is a time where you start look at looking at those negativity, those preconceived notions, that, that those curses that were spoken over you. And I see them as curses. They're the things that people say to us when we're small or when we're vulnerable, and they stab us right in the heart. They actually... Yeah, they wound us in a way that is unfair and, and not right, but is, you know, absolutely powerful and hurtful and devastating. So here we have that coming forward, and we have ourselves looking at things very, very differently because of it. And this brings us to the healing, you know, definitely needing to be a part of ourselves. But this also brings us to that place of understanding with the, with the guide. That place of looking within you, looking at what you desire, looking at what you need, looking at what you want, looking at the, the purpose of you moving forward and saying, this is where I need to be. Now remember, the guide here it represents Taurus, and Taurus is one of the energies that is greatly affected by this moon, okay? And its regenerative powers and efficiencies come forward, and the generation, the regenerating, there we go, powers of, of Taurus is the fact that you can focus on what needs to be focused on. You can go after what it is that you desire. You're looking for answers. You're, you're planting seeds. You also have this heightened sensitivity coming up around you, Gemini. And it's saying, what is it that I need? What is it that I want? And this is also going to be very powerful for those of you, Geminis, born on the cusp with Taurus. Your Taurian energy is going to be coming out more and more and more. But you're looking here, you see that, of that inner child. You're looking at that inner child and that connection with the inner you, the connection with the hurts, the pains, the disappointments that you have been through, the angers, the upsets, the upheavals. Those start to come forward and you start to say, no, no, I'm not defined by this hurt anymore. And it brings you to the queen of wands. It brings you to this place of passion, of power, of understanding, of truth, of, of seeing things more openly, more honestly, more clearly for yourself. And as you do this, you roll up your sleeves. You're like, this is what I need. This is who I am. This is what defines me. This is what I need within my life. And if I don't have it, what's the point? You know, what's the point of, of striving if I can't have my passion come forward, if I can't have my, my purpose be a part of me? And it brings you to this fierceness within yourself, this fierceness of understanding, this fierceness of looking at things so differently. And it opens the world for your heart because in yourself, you're like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this nonsense. I'm done with this anger. I'm done with this hurt. And you redefine you. And it brings you to the world opening. It brings you to looking at things. And instead of saying, I can't, it's like, yes, I can. And what's more important, I am. I'm moving in a way that is powerful, that is brilliant, that is purposeful, that is truth to me. And as you do this, the world becomes, Spirit is saying the world becomes your oyster, but the world becomes the place that, that makes you, that lets you see your pearls. So the way a pearl is made is that a piece of sand gets into an oyster's mouth and it bugs the heck out of that oyster. So it coats it with mucus and it coats it with mucus. I mean, if you told an oyster that, you know, it's, you know, mucus was going to be so valuable to people, I think they would find it, you know, hysterical. But it takes that irritant and it protects itself from it. It builds up this, this shell around it and says no more. And that becomes astoundingly valuable to us human beings when we find one, right? That's what the world has been doing to us. It's given us this irritant. And during this time, it's us saying, you know what? There's more out here for me than I had ever realized. There's beauty around me that I hadn't seen before. It's power. It's connection. It's, it's understanding. And it's opening up the door. And it brings you to this place where you stand before the world and you say, this is me. This is what I want. This is where I'm headed. This is what I desire. This is me. And nobody's taking it away. And it brings you then to the page of pentacles, being a student 
of your prosperity, not what makes everybody else prosperous, not the way that they see it and say, oh, well, that's the only way that you can make money. That's the only way that you can have happiness. You have to follow this path. It is the way of sitting there and saying, what is prosperity for me? What is bounty for me? How is it that I move forward? Where is it that I need to be? And so the doors start to open in an astounding way because you become a student of it. You're looking at things and instead of saying, I know, I have all the answers, you're saying, I'm seeking, I'm figuring it out, I'm opening the doors, I'm finding out so much more than I had ever thought before. And so you become the quester, you become the seeker, you become the person who is looking so much more deeply into the world than you had before. And it brings you then to the Three of Cups. It brings you to looking at the hurts, the pains, the disappointments that come from people who are supposed to celebrate you. For me, the Three of Cups is always those people who are supposed to celebrate you in your life and just couldn't. They couldn't celebrate you. They couldn't honor you. They couldn't love you the way that they needed to or the way that you needed to. And you thought they could. And sometimes what is so devastating is not the actual person. You know, not the fact that you don't have a relationship with, with your mother, your father, you know, that the, the relationship with the person that you were head over tea kettle in love with fell apart. It's the ending of the dream that you had, the ending of the idea that you had of the person. And that becomes devastating. Sometimes the end of the dream is worse than the actual ending because you might sit there and be like, well, you know, that person kind of really bothered me and I wouldn't have them in my friend circle, you know, to begin with. But it's the end of the dream of what it should have been or what it could have been. And so here with the Three of Cups, we look at this and it's with friendships, you know, those really great friendships and they, that fell apart. The person who sat there and betrayed you and you're sitting there and you're looking at it and you might be like, I, I can't. And for your own good, I know people sit there and say, talk it out, you know, everything like that. But if you're a highly sensitive person and highly emotionally connected to people, you might just need the silence. You might just need to sit there and say, no, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not being pulled back down that road by guilt, by hurt, by, by feeling your hurt and thinking that your hurt matters more than mine. And so here with the Three of Cups, that comes forward in a, very, in a very profound way. And you're looking at it within your heart and you're seeing how it broke your heart. How what you have lived through in your life, the people that you have trusted and that, you know, when things have fallen apart, it's like, it's the hurt that you sit there and you think, how? Why? You know, what did I do to deserve this? And here it's the naming of it. We forget the power of naming of things. And yet we see the power that our ancestors knew of naming, of giving things names. We see it in, in Boethius is coming to mind most distinctly. We see it in the Bible. We see it in, in, in Gilgamesh. The power of names is so important. And yet we don't think it holds any validity nowadays. Here, with the Three of Swords, it's naming the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, the angers, the upsets, the, the devastations. I'm thinking of Beowulf, and I said the philosopher, Boethius, so I do apologize. But he also had to name things really quite distinctly. And that was where his power came from. Yeah, his power of understanding. And so here, you're looking at things, and the door is opening. You're looking at things and you need to name the hurt, the pain, the disappointment and, and see it, hold it because it has a reason to it. There's a reason why that pain stays because the pain stays because it's part of our fear. We, we fear going back to it. We fear being a part of it again. And so the fear comes forward to protect us, to say, oh, you don't want to walk down that path. You know, there lies a bear. And so you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to stumble across a bear with her cubs, so you're going to be mindful of that. It, it's just like this. It's like, don't, don't do that. You could be stalked by a tiger. So we had these primitive ideas and protection mechanisms set into our heads. And now, because our world is so different, we still hold the fears forward, the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, the angers. And we need to see why they continuously break our hearts and why we 
fall into that pattern of it happening time and time again. It moves us then to the Ace of Wands, God's source spirit, however you, God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you this gift of passion, of clarity, of like a torch within the darkness, this fire illuminating your way. And it's helping you see things so much more honestly, so much more clearly, so much more distinctly. And it's bringing you to the high priestess. It's bringing you to looking beyond the veil within yourself. It's having the veil lifted from your eyes. And instead of seeing the world through preconceived notions, through the way people want you to see the world, it's seeing the world as your truth, seeing the world as your passion, seeing your, the world as your understanding. And starting to see that not everything you thought was truth. You know, not all the pre preconceived notions that you had or you're seeing behind, because you are seeing behind the veils of other people. It's like, oh, wow, they don't have the perfect life either. Or, wow, they're struggling just as much as I'm struggling. And it becomes something that's rather extraordinary. And so the high priestess here is an awakening, but it's a very private, very spiritual, very inward awakening. It's, it's seeing things through, through eyes that felt shut for too long. It's embracing your passion. It's embracing your power. It's embracing your ideas and your ideals. And it moves you to this space of seeing this resurrection of self. But it, there's, there's an underline of pain throughout this whole entire time, Gemini, which I know none of us want to hear, but it's, it's very important to know that you, this moon may make you feel a little bit melancholy. You might find that, I mean, this is the moon. If you want to do a detox, if you want to do a cleanse, if you want to purge things from your psyche or from yourself, this is the time to do it. So here, with the Ten of Swords, this is the time to sit there and say, I am being reborn. This is my dying way of the old self, rebirth of the new, looking at the past 10 years and all the lessons that we've accumulated and saying, it's because I need to stand here now. It's because I needed to see this. It's because I needed this understanding. And it starts to open up the doors. It starts to have you embrace a new dawn. But it also has us mourning who we once were. And that pain and that hurt and that disappointment of either not getting to where you wanted to be at the age you are right now and sitting there and saying, why is it so unfair? Why is it so hard? Or the sense of saying, I really like that person I once was. You know, why did things have to change? And as Plato said, all is flux and nothing stays the same. If Plato said it for, what, what was it, 400 years before the common era, then it is true for all humanity that all changes and nothing stays the same. And it can be mournful, it can be intense, and it can be overwhelming. But there's also power here. There's also brilliance here in the resurrection of self, in the knowledge and the pain that has become the wisdom, wisdom that you live by. And it brings you to your strength. This isn't brute force strength which is what our world loves. This isn't, I will enforce these rules and you will do exactly as I say. This is the strength through kindness, compassion, love, generosity of spirit, beauty of self. This is the strength that comes because you see you more than you have ever seen yourself before. You have the repeat of the number three here. Divinity is watching over you. All right? You have the repeat of the number two. There's creative connection. And this is a time to co-create. This is a time to contemplate and understand. But it's so interesting that divinity is watching over you and bringing you tremendous power. But through pain, through disappointment, through, through seeing those hurts and saying, I see you. I see you for who you are. But I see me for the power that I hold and the beauty that is a part of my soul. And that... That's really quite exquisite. This is an exquisite time, even though at times it will not feel like it. But there's an awakening that comes forward and a power that you step into. It's kind of like you've been waiting to step into this role. You've been waiting to step into these shoes for your whole entire life. So let's see what the moon has to say about this. How will Gemini be affected by the February 
2021 full moon. How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? How will Gemini be affected by the February 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. So we have the growth, which is a huge part during this time. Guidance and extremes. Yeah, most definitely. It brings us to nourishment. Nothing will come of this situation. The pain, the hurt, the disappointment that we think is so absolutely important and like a huge factor within the constructs of who we are. Nothing comes of it the way that we think it will. So that's, that's really quite cool. All right. This says bring love into the situation. Adjustments are required. Your commitment is being tested and work through your fears, which is what this time is all about. It's about working through your fears and seeing what's truly important to you. So we have here, we have growth. We have growth through the pain, the disappointment, through the, the leeches within our lives. And we have growth within the healing and the unity that comes forward. It's a sense of seeing how we're growing, seeing how we're developing, seeing how we're changing. What was so important to us isn't as important as it once was. And what we used to poo-poo, we might find is, is more important again. Or we might find that we're coming back to our roots, to what is truly important to us when we lost the path for too long. And, oh, I don't believe I said that the next full moon is on the 28th of March. Okay, And that, of course, is in Virgo. Then we have gratitude. And here, over this coming together, and I love that with the, and you can see it here, with the, with the guide, you have the older woman and you have the young child. And here, you have the older hand and you have the younger hand here. So it's all about that connection, that connection through growth, through understanding, ancestral wisdom is going to be so important for you during this time. That connection is going to be so big and it moves you then, it moves you to a place of gratitude, but it also moves you to a place of extremes as you have the fire sign coming forward, as you have your passion, your determination really, really being a part of you. It then has nourishment come as the world opens, as you embrace your prosperity, it's like you start nourishing your soul, your body, the way that it longs to be nourished. And it brings you to nothing will come of the situation over the hurts and the pains and the disappointments that we think are our defining keys. It's like, no, they're not. Nothing will come of, of the devastation. It's not of the devastation. It's that they don't get to have that power over you. They can't come back and make you afraid. They can't. I remember I was going to, this was before, of course, the world closed down. I was going to a, an event and I realized that people from my past were going to be there. And I hadn't seen them in a forever since I was a really little child. And they, they had scared me when I was little. And I had found them very overwhelming. Like, yeah, people. And I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to have to interact with them. Like, this is terrible. And, and it wasn't because I wasn't the same person I was when I was little. And they weren't the same person that they were. It was actually much better than I thought. Nothing came of the situation like I thought it would in my head. So just know that from the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, and the fears, what you have built in your head will not be what you, you actually experience, okay? When, when you face it, as you heal from it, as you, as you look at it. And it brings you then to bringing love into the situation after the hurt, the pain, the upset, the disappointment, the naming of it, and saying, I'm replacing 
the hurt with love, with compassion. It brings you then to the adjustments are required for the, the passion to light your way, for the light to move you forward, for the insights to come, for the deeper knowledge, the deeper understanding, the seeing beyond the veil. And it brings you then to your commitments being tested, to the sense of here with this rebirth and this reclaiming, you are being tested. What is it that you truly want? How is it that you want to move forward? Because you're working through your fears and that's where your strength is coming from. And this moon, this moon is a test for you, Gemini. This moon is intensity and it's, and it's, it's pushing you, you know, just that bit further than you would like to be, be pushed. But it's an extraordinary moon. It is an extraordinary moon for you. And you find yourself with extraordinary ideas. You find yourself, you know, moving forward in such greater truth and passion and understanding. So let's see what Luna is saying for you subconsciously. You have here creation. This is a time to create. And this is also a time to connect with the vibrational energy of this world to create the power that you want, to create the beauty that you hold, to to understand this beautiful coming together of nature and people and, and life and self. And it brings you then to looking at the bigger picture, to taking aim and looking not only at what you're, you're going after right now, but looking at the bigger picture of what it is that you're developing, what it is that you desire, what it is that you want. It brings you then to your subconscious chakra message. and you're reborn. This is the Earth Star Chakra located six inches below your feet. You are reborn during this time. And you're not going to sit there and think, oh, and it's kind of like once you learn how to fly, in my imagination, when you learn how to fly, when a butterfly learns how to fly, it doesn't sit there and keep on thinking, wow, remember when I was inchworm? I could only, you know, kind of inch across and, and I had to be afraid of everything and it took, it took so long and now I can fly, but you know, I was an inchworm once, so I can't really fly that far. It's like, no, or not an inchworm, a caterpillar, okay? But it's like you're looking at things and you're saying, I can, I can fly. I can soar. There is so much more here for me than when I was a caterpillar. I've transformed. And that's what you're doing. It brings you then to your subconscious tarot message which is the Knight of Wands, defending and protecting exactly what it is that you want. Even if it winds up being a mistake and you sit there and go, oh, well, you know, that's, that's not what I really desired. I'm going to change tactics. But you, you see, you're taking in, you're connecting, and it's, it's opening up so much more power for you than you could ever have imagined. And you become that hero. You become that hero of your story. You become that hero of your truth and what sets your heart on fire and what it is that you love. Everybody else doesn't have to get it. As long as you do, that's enough. All right, Gemini, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we are reborn into power. And as the pain of our past isn't the, the weight around our necks anymore, but become the stepping stones of our future. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Gemini, and may you have a blessed moon.